हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू दिस न्यू सीरीज दैट इज डेटा साइंस फ्रॉम स्क्रैच तो इन दिस सीरीज आई एम गोइंग टू कवर एवरी एस्पेक्ट ऑफ डेटा साइंस तो इट विल बी अ सीरीज कंसिस्टिंग ऑफ ऑल द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ डेटा साइंस इंपॉर्टेंट कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ डेटा साइंस सो आई विल बी पब्लिशिंग वीडियोज सो इन दिस वीडियो वी विल बी कवरिंग इंट्रोडक्शन टू डेटा साइंस and also we will be building a social graph so it will be a hands on uh, into the field of data science so definitely i hope you will enjoy it a lot so let's jump in to the video the ascendance of data so we live in a world that is drowning in data so you use smartphone so in smartphone you use many applications like e-commerce social media in social media daily you uh, you might add post you in instagram you might upload pictures so billions of people are using social media so all of them are the uploading some or other content so ultimately uh, if you talk about e-commerce at this particular instant of time millions of people all over the world are doing shopping so they are generating data so every second every instant of time data is getting generated so 2.5 quintillion bytes of data is getting generated every day so it's a very big number so so it contains lots and lots of zeros so so, the, so that is around 2.5 into 10 to the power of 9 gb and one more interesting uh, observation 90% of the world's data today has been created in the last 2 years alone so it's a mind boggling uh, uh, fact so you can imagine in future this number will be uh, will get increased in an exponential manner because as you see if you talk about youtube so people are slowly uh, you can see that lots and lots of people are getting into youtube so they are uh, send, uh, they are creating videos so video you can uh, uh, very easily uh, see that it is a uh, two, two dimensional uh, data means it is a matrix form of data so definitely the size of the video you can imagine you know, 5 gb 10 gb 1 gb so the amount of data getting generated each day will increase on a daily basis yes so if i talk about the ascendance of data so let's uh, dig more deeper into it websites track every users every click or in fact all the big companies they are tracked they are tracking every uh, activity you are doing in their website uh, so it, it can be their marketing tactics or they are trying to uh, optimize their website or they are trying to optimize the user experience so definitely uh, most of them are tracking your activities so websites track every users every click so huge amount of data they are making use of similarly uh, if you uh, see all of you uh, all of us are using smartphones so some of uh, you might be using iphone some of you might be using android but definitely we all are equipped with the smartphone so one of the very interesting feature of the smartphone is uh, the uh, gps location so your smartphone is building up a record of your location every second of every day so uh, definitely it might be the case ki if you just pause the video and look uh, into your phone you will see that your location is enabled so there are many applications without your knowing they turn your location on because they might be using your location in the background there may be some feature uh, the, that might be used by that app so ultimately look, our location data is getting uh, tracked every second so uh, you, every second you can imagine the amount of data because uh, millions of uh, people are using smartphone so all their data it will be a huge number from this also we can feel the ascendance of data ki 
how the amount of data is increasing on a daily basis the amount of new data that is getting generated because definitely your location is a new data today you might win in uh, 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 let us suppose san francisco uh day after tomorrow you will be in california then you will be in los angeles so you might be migrating you, you might be traveling uh, to different places so your location is changing similarly uh, if we talk about the smart wearable devices so th th this you might be aware so this is a, a next big thing uh, that is called wearable technology so google already uh, came up with the google glasses so uh, definitely uh, there are lots of uh, innovation going around uh, in the smart wearable so let's see some example so as you can see smart ring definitely it, it, it might be having some application we have smart glasses we have smart shirt in fact uh, shirt is also become has also become smart smart watch we already know uh, most of them might be using the smart watch because smart watch has become very common these days we have bluetooth key tracker uh, this uh, many of you already use smart shoes smart socks smart pants smart belt and uh, that uh, your uh, gprs uh, baby control uh, for that smart bag for that your school going kids and smart bracelet and the smart finger so definitely this is just a glimpse so if you get deep into the field of uh, wearable technology you will get amazed looking into the innovation so definitely uh, all of these devices are tracking one or other parameter and they are sending all these data to the cloud so new data is getting generated i hope you are getting the point so most of these uh, wearable devices they track your heart rates they track your movement habits diet and sleep patterns so this is also uh, responsible in the ascendance of data similarly uh, now we are uh, heading towards uh, an era of smart cars smart car if i talk about google google has already launched a self driving car so it uh, has been tested successfully for a very long uh, distance that you can google out so smart uh, car if i talk about smart car uh, so it collects our driving habits for example uh, gps environment control rear view camera is also there so it is also gathering data active sus uh, suspension electric drive wheels abs brakes hybrid control collision sensors automatic shift transmission so ultimately uh, smart cars uh, are also responsible for uh, the ascendance of data so uh, you might be uh, knowing already uh, some of you might be uh, in living in the smart home so uh, see uh, home is the dream of every individual few decades ago luxury was the priority now since we are in a world of uh, technology we live in a world where technology is evolving technology is changing the world around us so people are uh, heading towards uh, that uh, high tech homes smart homes so smart homes uh, collect uh, living habits for example if we talk about smart home uh, robotic appliances security cameras that is smart surveillance smart lightning uh, smart lightning is definitely <coughs> sorry uh, a smart lightning means automatic uh, control of uh, lightning self programming uh, thermostat uh, so thermostat is a temperature uh, that sensor so it can sense the temperature and uh, accordingly it can perform some operations based on the temperature entertainment hub and remote locking system Uh, so definitely it is also responsible for the ascendance of data you can imagine if every home in the future if the smart home the, that uh, the, the solution smart home solution if it gets in a affordable price range every house will afford it and when if every house will afford it you can imagine the amount of data generated by the smart homes so it will be huge similarly uh, uh, smart marketers collect purchasing habits so uh, we live in a world where every other person 
means every other entity uh, either it is a company is an entrepreneur they are busy in marketing their products and services so definitely the smart marketers uh, what they do they try to collect your purchasing habits in what you like what you purchase on a monthly basis on a yearly basis what is the thing which you are looking to purchase so all these uh, data they gather and based on that they prepare their marketing campaign to enhance their sales so it is specific measurable achievable relevant and time bound so definitely uh, all these activities are leading to the ascendance of data the internet itself represents a huge graph of knowledge internet itself is creating enormous data let's look into the scenario so if we look into internet so you already know internet is a network of networks so many small small networks when they connect with each other so we have a very large uh, internet so now if i talk about internet see there are many bloggers who are publishing articles they are generating data all uh, many companies uh, companies uh, or entrepreneurs solopreneurs they are maintaining their website so they are generating new data we all use social media we are generating enormous data via social media instagram twitter linkedin and linkedin is a corporate social network we all use and apart from that youtube as i have already told you and the future we are expecting from metaverse so it will generate even more data because it will be a three dimensional data so definitely uh, internet itself is responsible for the ascendance of data now the one one very interesting uh, observation that we should make is this if by in just two years uh, uh, 90% of the data is uh, has been uh, generated so definitely it is a, a point to be noted because see internet uh, invented in 1980s and 90s so at that time uh, it started uh, its operations so so internet uh, is in picture for at least two three decades so definitely uh, internet is already uh, generating enormous data and if we talk about social media also uh, facebook uh, 2003 2004 instagram also it is a old it is not that key. in just two years instagram uh, got uh, popularity youtube is also a very old thing so definitely the question is this key. then why in just two years uh, this much data got generated uh, so this is a point uh, to be uh, we should think about it so one of the factor that i will discuss with you uh, i want to discuss with you because it okay. so you all might have uh, heard about internet of things iot so in the uh, previous two years internet of things has been uh, in use in many of the big big firms so all all the big big companies that manufacturing and that uh, industries they are uh, they converted into industry 4.0 and uh, that uh, industrial automation uh, that uh, industrial internet of things and uh, your uh, commercial internet of things and domestic internet of things so iot is one of the uh, factor responsible for uh, this huge rise and uh, uh, it's uh, a research that you can very easily get from google also uh, key because of iot uh, see uh, iot means you are you know that any object can con it can get connected to internet so there are very small small chips esp8266 so using that uh, you can uh, communicate uh, so that acts as a Wi-Fi so that small chip you can integrate with any object so that object can communicate with the internet so whenever any uh, uh, node when you, whenever any system either it is laptop or thing, it gets connected to the internet an IP address is assigned to it so IP address is a unique address you can say for that instance so uh, because of the large number of devices in the market uh, in the current scenario ip uh, in fact ip addresses are getting uh, short uh, means there is a shortage of ip address so that's why we are moving towards from ipv4 to ipv6 so i, I hope uh, this you got 
so if i to talk about internet in in detail so you can see that internet is in itself an enormous cross reference encyclopedia you can get anything from the internet it's a uh, encyclopedia of knowledge so domain specific databases domain specific databases about movies music sports uh, pinball machines memes and science so domain specific you can uh, very easily understand data related to particular domain so uh, you uh, talk about any movie you get the complete data of that movie so there are many uh, websites uh, managing the data like like imdb so uh, similarly for sports also uh, for every match uh, uh, for every uh, let us suppose you, uh, we talk about football for, for every football match uh, data we can get so all that data is maintained in the domain specific databases similarly music databases is also there so internet is kind of, is full of domain specific databases so it is also uh, uh, resulting in the ascendance of data too many government statistics from too many governments to wrap your head around yeah so see every government uh, in the current uh, uh, era which we live they all are uh, storing their data uh, in the cloud so and uh, they are continuously generating enormous amount of data so government data is enormous so that is also responsible for the ascendance of data see as a data scientist you should be very much uh, you should be very practical so that's why i am discussing all this uh, uh, in detail with you because as a data scientist we will be playing with the data so we can imagine the nature of data the variety of data uh, so or you can say the diversity of data the data is getting from you know, different different sources and the uh, the amount of data that is uh, getting generated on a daily basis is enormous so that we can very easily feed from all the facts presented by me so buried in these data buried in this enormous data are answers to countless questions that no one ever thought to ask so that uh, definitely in these data on this enormous data there are gold so we have to mine those gold diamond all the that precious uh, stone you can say that we have to mine that we have to extract the nectar of intelligence of smart decision making from this buried data so as a data scientist uh, so we will be equipped with so many tools so during the course i will be uh, taking you through many tools so using all those tools we have to just mine 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 so we have to apply great algorithms to uh, extract the nectar from this data i hope uh, you are getting a feel uh, and the power of data scientist so now the next big question we are interested in is what exactly is data science so a data scientist is someone who knows more statistics than a computer scientist and more computer science than a statistician so see uh, there are two things one is data science and one is data scientist so if i talk about data science so as uh, you can see data science is made of two terms data and science so data we already know and science uh, is a field of study so data science we can uh, say that uh, data science is the field of study dealing with data so definitely if we talk about data there may be many operations uh, related to data like uh, gathering of data cleaning of data processing of data visualizing data so all these are operations uh, comes under the field of data science and uh, data scientist is someone who knows more statistics uh, than a computer scientist and more computer science than a statistician so definitely if you are aspiring to become a data scientist then definitely you should be well equipped with both the knowledge of computer science especially programming algorithms computations and statistics statistics is very important uh, when we talk about data science so uh, data scientists include wide horizon of practitioners ranging from 
statisticians to software engineers machine learning experts to people who are completely new to machine learning phd's with impressive publication records to people who have never read an academic paper so we can see this figure so in if we talk about data science so, so data science is a field of study which involves many other fields like computer science mathematics and domain expertise uh, computer science it is very clear because we will be dealing with algorithms we will be dealing with programming computation mathematics is very clear we will be dealing with statistics probability uh, very advanced mathematics we will be dealing uh, when we are dealing with data science and what is this domain expertise see uh, as a data scientist you will be solving uh, problems uh, related to data so definitely uh, see every data will be belonging to some domain so as we have already seen we can have geospatial data we can have voice data we can have image data so different different type of data we can have we can have data related to movies we can have data related to football matches so there are different different domain like uh, signal processing or uh, artificial intelligence or uh, you can say digital digital marketing marketing so uh, definitely uh, when we talk about data science uh, when we talk about solving problems related to data domain expertise is also plays a very important role so i hope this is very clear now the intersection of this uh, computer science and domain expertise uh, gives us data processing and uh, definitely uh, applying computer science in domain specific knowledge uh, will result in uh, data processing task applying uh, computer science with mathematics we get machine learning so machine learning is all about mathematics plus computations and uh, mathematics plus domain expertise domain knowledge is all about statistical research a data scientist is someone who extracts insights from messy data so that is very clear to us we can very easily uh, relate it now let's see like okay, what exactly uh, the what is the exact meaning of extracting insights from messy data so let's uh, look into some examples so we all use facebook so uh, you have seen uh, facebook analyzes your hometown and your current location to identify global migration patterns and where the fan bases of different football teams live so i hope this is very clear to you because see whenever you sign up on facebook you provide your uh, that uh, current city hometown all this the detail and definitely if you are using mobile app so it might be the case that a uh, facebook might be using your location also so with this location data it is identifying the global migration pattern of uh, millions of people and based on that uh, it is predicting some uh, useful uh, insights uh, like uh, Uh, fan bases of different uh, football teams similarly uh, we all use amazon for online shopping e-commerce so amazon tracks your purchases and interaction and uses this data to predictively model which of its customers are pregnant to better market baby related purchases to them so this is an example of a recommendation engine so definitely whenever you do online shopping you see some recommendations from the uh, amazon so that recommendations are specific to you it is not that the uh, that amazon is uh, recommending anything to you so it is recommending the thing which uh, you are most probable to buy or you are uh, the, the thing which you are most willing to buy it recommends only that so for for that also it is uh, uh, extracting lots and lots of data uh, related to your uh, behavior purchasing habits uh, your interests so uh, and using those data it, it is extracting insights from that messy data similarly uh, if we talk about in 2012 the obama campaign employed dozens of data scientists who data mined to identify voters who needed extra attention choosing optimal donor specific fundraising appeals and programs and focusing get out the vote efforts where they were most likely to be useful so this is very clear uh, from here uh, see uh, 
if we talk about uh, election campaigns not only in us but also in india also uh, politicians political parties are heavily using uh, the data science to uh, uh, one of the example is sentiment analysis of tweets of uh, uh, that cover stories so that they get an idea of the hype in the market uh, uh, what is their image means people are talking uh, positive uh, about them or negative about them Similarly, uh, in this example, we can see Obama campaign also did some data analysis, so it extracted some messy data and uh, extracted some insights from that data. Similarly, in 2016, uh, the Trump campaign tested a staggering variety of online ads and analyzed that data to find what worked and what didn't. So Donald Trump uh, also uh, used uh, this uh, uh, messy data to extract insights uh, so that uh, he can uh, pitch accurately and get lots and lots of votes. So you can see the diversity of data science. Data scientists also use their skills for solving social problems, very important. That is using data to make the go government more effective to help the homeless and to improve the public health. So definitely uh, this is very straightforward uh, and we can very easily correlate. So you can see that as a data scientist, definitely you will uh, be a superhero kind of uh, personality because you will be solving lots of problems and problems related to different different fields, not just a single uh, uh, problem of a particular domain. So that is the beauty of data science because uh, see that every field is generating data, whether it is fashion industry, whether it is law, legal industry, uh, or whether it is uh, uh, corporate world marketing. Every organization is uh, generating lots and lots of data. So as a data scientist, you have opportunity to explore multiple domains. Okay, friends. So now let's uh, jump into some hands-on on data science so definitely uh, in this video uh, we will be building a social graph uh, so let's check it out so the first thing uh, which you will be needing will be the environment to run the project to code and run the project so definitely we will be uh, implementing the codes uh, in python python programming language uh, so as you already know python is a very popular uh, programming language and uh, widely used by data scientists so that uh, so we all we will also be using python so now the most uh, easy way to just dive directly dive into uh, the programming coding some interesting uh, algorithms is google collab so with google collab you can directly uh, online you can uh, write your python code and you can run it and test it out no need to install any dependency any library nothing so let me quickly show you how you can uh, access google collab and how you can get started with me so just type google collab so the first uh, tab you, uh, first result which you get just click on it. so the link is collab.research.google.com so this you get now simply click new notebook so you can see uh, you got a new notebook now you can directly just uh, keep on typing the python code just like i'm doing and uh, you can run so when you will run uh, this uh, notebook uh, will be connected to an instance in the google cloud the runtime environment for python and it will run the code and display the result so i hope uh, it is very clear to you. okay so let's uh, get started uh, with the uh, hands-on project so let's build social graph the social network of data scientists so definitely we will be uh, building a project so it will be a social graph 
which is basically the social network of data scientists so throughout the course we will be learning about data science concepts by solving problems that you encounter at work so we will be solving lots and lots of problems related by using uh, the concepts of data science we will look at data uh, explicitly supplied by users we will look at data generated through interactions with the site and we will look at data uh, we got from experiments that we will design so let us consider social graph the social network for data scientists we will be building it from scratch so definitely uh, so in this uh, uh, project we will not be using any pre-built library everything every code we will be writing from scratch so it will be a great learning experience for you at the end you will have a pretty solid understanding of the fundamentals of data science so you will get a feel see how data scientists actually work because when you will see the code or doing some operations so it will be a different uh, uh, experience for you yes and you will be ready to apply your skills in a company or to any other problem that happen to interest you so definitely uh, it's going to be an exciting uh, journey so let's get started so the see uh, we are building a social network of data scientists so you can very easily uh, relate uh, the social network you already know facebook is a social network linkedin is a social network so linkedin is a, is a social network of professionals so we are building a specific uh, social network uh, consisting only of data scientists so definitely we will be needing data, data of data scientists. So the first uh, thing which we should do is we should get data, lots of data. So for that, uh, uh, we, we have to download the uh, data scientist the data set. Uh, so uh, let's look into the code. So see, first uh, we are importing pandas, import pandas as PD. So pandas you might already know or pandas library uh, we use extensively in data science because see uh, uh, all the excel data excel data means csv data data in the cs excel sheet so, uh, whenever we deal with that so with just one line of code we can import all that data into a data frame using pandas so that's why you, we are using pandas so in the pandas there is a concept of data frame you might be aware so uh, uh, as pd i think it is basic python you, you should know that so instead of writing completely pandas we are giving it a alias that is pd so pd here represents pandas so pd dot read csv is a inbuilt function in the pandas library uh, so we, here we are passing the url where uh, the csv file is located so data scientist dot csv file contains the uh, data of data scientists so that uh, path we have provided now so and what we are doing we are printing the uh, this data frame so we are converting this data frame to string and we are printing it so now let's run it so when you will run it uh, yes so see we got the data so what uh, this code did first it imported it downloaded that csv file and it uh, copied all the data of the csv into its data frame that is data scientist df data frame and uh, we converted it into the string and we printed it so this is the data we have so as you can see uh, there is one column called id uh, we have name okay uh, so you can see we have interest so uh, steve davis with id one is interested in hadoop big data and edge space similarly salary in dollars we have the salary of steve Bezos, so the salary of every data scientist we have tenure in years means you can say experience so steve davis is in the field of data science for past 7.2 years it's great and paid account so we can say that uh, all these data scientists may be using uh, uh, our this social network so definitely in our social network there are two options uh, one is of free uh, usage and other is uh, data scientists can subscribe so they can have either paid account or unpaid account so steve davis is having unpaid account 
So this is the data. So I hope the data is very clear. So you can look into the data. So we got the data. Now the now see in this data you can see that the first row is uh, uh, not useful for us because see it it is n a n is not a number. So we have to eliminate the first row. So that so we have to drop the first row containing n a n. So how we will do that? So let's uh, look into it. So we download we got the data now we have to eliminate the first row because it is containing n a n. So data scientist D F is our data frame. So in this data frame there is a method called drop. So you in the drop uh, we are uh, specifying the labels is equal to zero and x is equal to zero. So this represents the first row. So this represents the first row. So automatically we have eliminated the first row. So data scientist D F is equal to data scientist D F dot drop. So now we got a data frame with uh, first row eliminated. Now let's uh, convert it and print it out. So when you will run it, so from, so you as you can see the first row is eliminated that containing NAM. So that is done. Okay. Now one more interesting thing uh, which you can very easily observe here ID. I see ID should be integer because in most of the operations, in fact. Uh, you have seen id to be always integer but here id is not an integer it is a decimal number so we have to convert this column into integer so this is, so this is our next operation converting first column to integer so let's see how we will do that uh, so we have the data scientist uh, df data frame with first row eliminated now here there is a function called as type astype and here uh, we you have to just specify the name of the column and data type. So data frame uh, dot as type and uh, in the dictionary uh, the name of the column and the uh, data. So the name of the column is id and what data type we want int integer. So int. So okay. Then we are converting it into two string and we are printing it. So let's see. Okay. So as you can see. Our first column got into integer. So now, uh, okay. So uh, until now, what we did, we uh, downloaded the data, we converted it into data frame, and we did some data cleaning. So you got a feel of data cleaning operation. Similarly, uh, see if we talk about social networks. So in social network, the data of data scientists we need that we already have, but we also need the data of their uh, of uh, connections because social network is all about friends, mutual friends, connections, networking. So that data also we want. So that's why now we will be downloading data scientist friends data set. So this data set we are downloading. So how to uh, down, uh, get the data uh, in uh, this uh, uh, data frame. It, it is very clear to you. Uh, the code you can very easily read it. So let's run it. Okay. So as you can see, uh, we have the data set. So see, looking into data set, we can see that uh, we have two columns, ID1 and ID2. So definitely ID1 will be the ID of first uh, data scientist and ID2 will be the his friends, ID of its friends. So we can see that uh, data scientist with ID2 is friends with 3 and 4. Data scientist with ID3 is friends with uh, uh, data scientist with ID5, 6 and 7. So this data uh, makes sense. Uh, now similarly, in this data also, the first row we have to eliminate. So we all you already know how to do that. So just the drop uh, function we are calling. So let uh, let's run it. So you as you can see, the first row got eliminated. Uh, now similarly here you can see ID one is of uh, decimal. We want it in integer. So you already know how to do that. Uh, so as type. Uh, in the dictionary, uh, the name of the column is id1 and we want int. So that's int. So now let's run it. So now let's see what happens. So see, we got so we did the data. Clean. So now we have all the data and we uh, with uh, pre uh, all the pre processing means cleaning that. So uh, getting data is done. Now the next step is preparing the data set. So now definitely the, the data is still in the form of data frame. So definitely uh, we will be slicing uh, the columns and, and doing some operations. So that is known as preparing data set. So let's look into it how we will do that. 
so first we will be preparing a list of dictionaries so we will have a list containing dictionaries so list of dictionaries the name of the list is users so users is a list of dictionaries the dictionary definitely it maps so uh, our dictionary in this scenario it maps user id and name so definitely we will have we will be having lots of dictionaries so every dictionary will be user id and name so user id name user id name so and it will be stored in the list so we are making a list of dictionaries so very easy first we are taking an empty list users now for, uh, what we are doing uh, uh, for index comma row in data scientist df uh, this data frame you already know the, the first data frame which we downloaded so the data scientist df df dot height that was so what the, this statement does all the rows one by one it will iterate because see uh, in the this data frame you already know we have already so this is the so it contains 30 rows so this uh, operation that uh, dot iter rows so what it will do it will one by one it will iterate all the rows so uh, first we will get the first row so in the first row uh, we, uh, we are using two labels one is index and one is row okay so row you can uh, very easily relate row is the exact row uh, means data and index you can uh, represent the counting of the data and counting always starts with zero so index represents the counting and the row represents the exact data and we took an empty dictionary so uh, see uh, since in the dictionary we will be mapping user id and name so that definitely uh, we had uh, d id is equal to row id so row here you know the first row of the data frame so in the row uh, the value of id column that we are getting and storing here similarly in the first row the value of the name column that we are getting and we are storing and we are appending this dictionary in the users list so similar operation we will do for rest 29 values so for the second value we will take the id value what and we will uh, app, uh, store it in the dictionary so id and name similar so in this way we got a list so let's uh, run this very straightforward so see uh, we have a list of uh, dictionaries so every dictionary contains user id and uh, name so user id is one and name is steve davis user id is two and name is june black user id three and name is jasmine mayors so in this way you got all the uh, users so i think we had 30 users so 30 okay awesome. <clears throat> 30 users we had so 30 uh, uh, id 30 and name is, is isabella copper so users we got similarly uh, now we will we are interested in friendship pairs so what is this uh, we will be preparing a list of tuples so we, have, we, will, we will be having a list containing tuples the name of the list is friendship pairs the tuple contains because tuple is a pair so tuple contains user ids which represents the pair of users which are friend with each other so each tuple will be containing two values so those two user ids are friends with each other and uh, we will store all these tuples in a list so that operation we are going to do so uh, we start with the friendship pairs empty list now this uh, it is very clear to you now here uh, we are taking the second data pair because uh, now we are interested in the friends data pair so data scientist friends df dot height row so uh, we are talking about this data frame so here also there are 30 uh, rows so one by one uh, we will iterate to each each of the rows and uh, so you you this uh, this you already know uh, 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 id one column id two column so uh, we are taking the values and storing it in r1 so r1 will contain first row id one uh, value and uh, first row id2 value will be stored in r2 now here uh, one interesting thing you will see that uh, if i talk about the second row so id2 value contains multiple values so here it will contain multiple values you will see it is containing 8 9 10 11, 18. so id2 contains multiple values so that's why uh, we have to do some more operations so what we are doing uh, we are splitting r2 
with comma uh, because see uh, this is very clear if i talk about second row so r2 will store 3 comma 4 so r2 is storing 3 comma 4 now what we are doing we are doing r2 dot split comma so this function uh, any string have it splits that string in comma and uh, all the values uh, the comma separated values will be a part of list so r2 dot split will uh, generate a list with two values in this scenario so the two values will be 3 and 4 so we have a list containing 3 and 4 okay for k in so uh, k will iterate the list so first k will be 3 then k will be 4 so when k will be 3 we will check uh, k should not be empty so k is not empty it is 3 so uh, we are making a tuple in tuple we are storing r1 because r1 is single value so that we can directly use and uh, here we will be uh, converting k into in and storing so here k will be 3 this 3 and uh, we are appending uh, this tuple in the list similarly uh, k will be 4 and we will be appending it uh, so uh, 2 comma 4 similarly when the row will be 3 we have 5 6 7 so r2 will be 5 6 7 when you will split you will get a list containing 5 6 and 7 so k will iterate every element so k will be 5 then k will be 6 then k will be 7 so when k will be 5 we will have a having a tuple 3 comma 5 the 3 comma 6 and 3 comma 7 and we are appending it so let's run it very straight so you can see 1 2 2 3 2 4 3 5 3 6 3 7 so this you can very easily correlate with that so we got the uh, friendship pairs now the next operation is finding key connectors so see first we got the data we prepared the data set now we have to find uh, key connectors so now what is this key connectors how we will find it so let's look into it so key connectors is all about uh, their uh, means connections see how uh, any user is connected with all other users because it is a social network so there will be a network so we are analyzing the network so let's analyze the network so first what we are doing we are uh, initializing the dictionary with an empty list for each user id so the idea is uh, see we are having a uh, dictionary uh, so we are making a dictionary so dictionary will be containing user id so because it is map dictionary is mapping so we are mapping user id with empty list initially so as you can see that uh, uh, friendships is a dictionary because in python curly braces means dictionary and uh, user id okay uh, column empty list for user in users so users you already know users uh, users we have already created uh, so users is a list so it is a list of dictionaries so here uh, user uh, will uh, will iterate uh, to all the elements means all the dictionaries so uh, during the first iteration this user will be representing the first dictionary which is this so this is the first dictionary so dictionary you already know it is a key value pair so user and key is id okay so user id will be one so here one will be assigned an empty list similarly two will be assigned an empty list three will be assigned an empty list so let's print the friendships dictionary so see one assigned empty list two three four so every user id got assigned an empty list now we have to fill this empty list with some uh, valuable data so let's see uh, how we will fill that so loop over the friendship pairs to populate it okay so now what we will do uh, we will loop over the friendship pairs so friendship pairs we have already created so this is the friendship pair. you already don't know friendship pairs represents uh, user ids which are friends with each other it means one and two are friends two and three are friends three and two and four are friends so this is friendship pairs so what we are doing one by one 
we are uh, looping over the friendship pair so so uh, friendship pairs is a list of tuple so first we will get the first tuple so i will be the first user j will be the second user and both i and j will be friends with each other i got i i got i got j now what i will do friendships i so here friendships is this uh, uh, diction dictionary so friendships i means i is a user id so let us suppose it is one okay dot append uh, j so see here friendships i is a empty list now we are appending that empty list with j so we are telling uh, see here one is friends with two so what we are doing friendship one so friendship one will be this list so we are appending uh, this list with two and similarly uh, we are uh, doing uh, uh, reverse also see if a is friend of b then automatically b will also be the friend of a so this is the uh, case so here friendship 2 uh, so this is the list we are appending this with one one more example let's take so let's take uh, exa this 2 so we know that 2 is friends with 3 2 is friends with 4 so when uh, the tuple is this 2 comma 3 i will be 2 and j will be 3 very clear so friendship 2 means this list we will append it with 3 similarly friendship 3 means this list we will append it with 2 so i, I if uh, you are facing any difficulty i want you to pause the video and just focus because very straightforward observation with some focus you will definitely get to the point okay so now let's run it okay so now you can see that uh, so after all the operations uh, after going through all the tuples you get this so uh, it's a very valuable information we extracted from the uh, very valuable insight we extracted from the messy data so the insight is this user id is friends with 2 15 and 25 2 is friends with 1 3 4 14 24 25 so we got the connection for social network now so we got the one uh, we got all the friends of one we got all the friends of two we got all the friends of three we got all the friends of user with user id four so this we got great okay so now the next uh, oper uh, the operation which we are interested is uh, what's the average number of connections so see uh, one is uh, connected with, with three other members two is connected with five uh, six other members three is connected with uh, seven other members so average number of connections we have to calculate so let's look into it so first we find the total number of connections by summing up the lengths of all the friends list so let's see what we are doing so uh, we have to find the total number of connections by summing up the lengths of all the friends list so this is the friends list i am talking about so definitely see every list will be having different different length so this list will be having length 3 this list will be having length 6 this list will be having length 7 so all the list will be having so we will be summing up all the lengths so uh, when you will uh, sum up all the lengths you will get the total number of connections so let's write code for that so this is the code for that uh, number of friends uh, users so, so we defined a function called number of friends and in this function we will be passing the user so definitely we will be iterating to all the users and one by one we will be passing every user so what is here users uh, as you can remember so i am talking about this this, this users so users is a list of dictionaries so every time i will be passing a dictionary so dictionary is containing id and name so definitely uh, if you look into this function this user is a dictionary it is containing id and name so what we are doing uh, this user id id we are taking and we are storing it in a local variable user id so user id we got now what we are doing friendships uh, this uh, dictionary we already made and in that we are passing that user id so let us suppose initially the user id is one so we are passing one so you will get the list so this list uh, we are uh, storing here and we are returning the length of the list so 
so ultimately what we are doing we are uh, doing it for all the users so for the first user we already did so for the second user also we will pass the dictionary and from the dictionary we extract the id we then from the friendships id user id we will pass so we will get the list of that user id so this list we will get now we are storing this list in this local variable and we are calculating its length and we are returning its length so okay so whatever value you are returning uh, that is getting here and we are summing it up because some function you already know some with some function you can sum all the values so in this way you will get the total number of connections so total number of connections we got now we have to find the average number of connections so average is total upon number of uh, values so here the number of values will be number of users so just uh, let's uh, number of calculating number of users is very easy uh, see users is a list containing all the users so length of the uh, this list will give number of users so length of users so length of uh, users will give num number of users and average connection will be total connections we have already calculated upon number of users so we got the uh, average number of connections so let's run it and print out the result so as you can see uh, for our data the total connection is 232 number of users is 30 and average connection is 7.73 means uh, on an average we can say that every user is uh, connected with seven other users so this uh, inside we can extract from the messy data okay so now let's jump into the other next uh, operation now let's find the most connected people they are the people who have the largest number of friends so definitely see we have many users every user will be having some uh, circle some connections so definitely there will be a person with maximum number of friends so that we are going to find so let's see how we will find that since the, uh, there aren't very many users we can simply sort them from most friends to least so we will be using the concept of sorting so how we will use that let's see so create a list uh, containing user id comma number of friends so first definitely we will be creating a list list will be contain list of tuples so tuple will contain the user id and number of friends pause very straightforward key uh, user number one how many friends he has user number two how many friends he has so that list we are making so let's uh, make that list so definitely we will be iterating the users uh, that is the list of dictionary uh, you can correlate the so list of dictionary uh, as you can see here 30 items it has so id so every, every dictionary is containing id and name so this is the user so for every user for every uh, that uh, what we are uh, we are extracting the id comma and uh, number of friends uh, function we have already made uh, so we sorry we are passing the user so it will return the number of friends so very straightforward uh, uh, computation so we are iterating the user's dictionary one by one we are fetching the user that is a dictionary from that dictionary we are uh, getting the id so, uh, so that id we got then what we are doing we are passing that dictionary as it is in the number of friends function so this number of friends function will calculate the total number of friends uh, uh, using the concept of this it will calculate the length of the list and it will return so in this way uh, we will get a list the name of the list is number friends by id so this is a list it contains tuple id number of friends id number of friends id number of friends now we just have to sort this list so what is sorting uh, arranging the data in ascending order or descending order so sorting list is very easy in python so just name of the list dot sort function key is equal to lambda for this you have to use part of syntax and uh, uh, id and friends one dog comma reverse is equal to true uh, reverse is equal to true means we are sorting the list in the descending order so uh, after sorting let's uh, print the list uh, you can uh, see that uh, so we have a sorted list so with this we can compute that 
uh, user with id 14 is having maximum number of friends that is 12 user with id 17 is having maximum number of friends that is 11 user with id 6 is having total number of friends that is 10 user with id 13 is having total number of friends that is 10 so in this way you got the data so we are done with this uh, finding key connectors now let's uh, look into the next operation that is data scientist we, you may know see actually uh, facebook we all use facebook suggests mutual friends so that is the uh, people you may know similarly in our social network we can uh, code a feature uh, implement a feature that is data scientist so let's look into it uh, very it seems very interesting so let's look into it so mutual friends so mutual friends you already know the concept of mutual friend uh, see um, mutual friends are common friends so from collections import counter so python also has got collections framework so in that there is a class called counter we are importing it now uh, we have defined a function friends of friends friends of friends and in this we are passing the user user will be that dictionary only and from this dictionary we are extracting the id so we are storing it in a local variable user id and we are returning the counter for friend id in friendships user id okay see we already got the user id so what we are doing uh, uh, fr from the friendships user id so what is this friendships we have already seen so friendships is a special type of uh, dictionary which is mapping user id and list of friends user id list of friends that you can very easily remember recall so here what we are doing uh, uh, user id we already know so when you will pass your user id you will get the list of friends of that particular user so that list we got so so definitely that list will be containing ids so for uh, so that we can say friend id so for every user we got a list of his friends now we are iterating that list so that is friend id so this is friend id now what we are doing now uh, we are once again using this friendships uh, uh, dictionary and we are passing the friend id means friend of friend now when you will pass this you will get one more list of uh, friends so that is friend of a friend id friend of a friend id it means uh, user id uh, we already know the friend of the user his friend so those ids we got and uh, here uh, one condition we have uh, seen a friend of a friend id should not be equal to user id this is very clear to you friend of a friend id should not be equal to user id and friend of a friend id not in friendships user id so this uh, i would suggest you please pause the video and please uh, try to uh, simulate it so you will get it so with this code uh, we will get the friends of friends so let's try to run it uh, that is mutual friends we get okay so let's uh, try to decode uh, the output so see here the output is telling this user uh, see uh, this user with id 3 and this is user with id 26 so they have four friends in common so similarly user with id 29 has three mutual friends there are three common friends uh, with user 3 Similarly, user 27 has three friend, uh, common friends with user 3. So, this is uh, the output. So, I hope uh, you can very easily uh, try to decode it. Now, the next uh, important uh, concept uh, the operation which we should focus that is interest because see, Facebook tracks your interest. Similar, so, our uh, that uh, social network of data scientists will also track interest. And uh, in the uh, data frame, as you can see, we already have this interest. So for for every data scientist, we have his uh, collected his interest. So this data we have to use. So let's see how we will use that. 
Uh, so this uh, already you know from the data frame iter rows means every row will be we will be iterating. So for every row we are taking its index and row. This row represents the entire row. From that row we are fetching the ID and we are fetching the interest and we are converting the interest into string str means string. Now definitely a user may have multiple interest comma separated interest so as we have already seen. So we are using split. So split will generate a list of all the interest so one by one we will be iterating the, in the list and we will be making a tuple tuple of user id and his interest and appending it in the interest list so let's run it so this we get very straightforward information so we can see that user one is interested in Hadoop, user 1 is interested in big data, user 2 is interested in Hadoop, user 2 is interested in Cassandra. So this is clear. Now let's uh, uh, move further. Group interest of user together. See, until now what we have, we have uh, separated uh, the interest. For example, one is interested in Hadoop, one is interested in big data, one is interested in HBS. Now we want we want to combine okay, one is interested in all these uh, fields, two is interested in all these fields. So now we want data like this. So how we will get that data? Using this operation. So first default dic dic means default dictionary. So default dictionary uh, we took and uh, we specified that uh, this dictionary will be holding the list list. So we created an empty uh, dictionary. So keys are user ID uh, as we already know and values are list of interest for that user ID. So, uh, the, so this is the dictionary which I am talking about uh, interest by user ID. So how we will make that? So interest we already know or we have it is a list of tuples. So we will iterate it. So you will get user ID and interest. So what you will do? Uh, this uh, for dictionary for user id dot append interest so let us suppose user id is one so for one you will get the list empty list and in that empty list you will append the interest this interest similarly when you will get here user id is one so that list we get so that list already contain hadoop now we will append that list with big data we will do uh, this operation for all the elements the entire you know, this list so you can see that so if i talk about user one so he is uh, interested in uh, hadoop big data hbase who is interested in hadoop big data cassandra mongodb so we got the trend okay so this is also clear now let's uh, move further grouping all users with similar interest based on interest so now see in, uh, in the previous uh, operation, we group uh, the interest based on user, means user ID, his interest, user ID, his interest. Now what we will do, we will group based on interest, means interest and in the, uh, in the list there will be users. For example, Hadoop, uh, these all people will be interested in Hadoop. Uh, we have HBase, so these all users are interested in HBase, so we will be grouping like this. So it is a very interesting grouping. So similarly, uh, we uh, made a dictionary uh, user ID by interest, user IDs by interest. Uh, we started with the default dictionary. Uh, now definitely we will be iterating in the uh, interest uh, this. Uh, so this is a list of tuples. So we are iterating with this. So here you can see that uh, in the tuple, we already know we have user ID and interest. Now what we are doing, user IDs by interest, here we are passing interest because see in dictionary the key should be unique. So let us suppose if I talk about the first data, so that is one comma Hadoop. So here the key will become Hadoop. Now Hadoop key cannot be repeated and we will append. So initially the we will get the empty list and we will add user one. Similarly, uh, when we will get here, once again, we will get Hadoop. So, uh, so what we will do, we will extract the list, the list will already be containing some data and we will append the new user too. So similarly, when you will run it uh, for all, all the data, you will see that we got the 
uh, classy that grouping based on the interest means if i talk about hadoop so all these data scientists are interested in hadoop all these data scientists are uh, interested in big data all these data scientists are interested in edge base all these data scientists are interested in that. so and uh, the the best part is just two to three three lines of code and uh, we are doing some magical stuff so this is the beauty of python so that's why we are using python for data science yes great so now let's look into the next operation uh, so now we are interested in finding the most common interest with a given user so definitely uh, we can see that uh, here we will be passing the user so we have a dictionary so we have a list of dictionary so every uh, the dictionary is a user so we will be passing any particular user so in the dictionary we have two uh, elements one is the id and another one is the name so what we are doing uh, we are fetching the id so for interest in interest by user id so interest by user id and we are passing the id so this is very clear to us interest by user id means when you pass the user id that particular user interest list will be returned because see every you we made a, a list of interest for every user sorry so i am talking about this so for one this is the interest list for two this so this is the interest list so from here we will get the interest list for that particular user then right? we will iterate that interest list to fetch interest one by one so we got the interest now what we will do uh, user ids by interest very interesting so you got the interest now we will use this list so we will pass that interest so you get the list of user ids so this is the interested user id which we got and uh, counter what counter does counter just count the values so it will count the number of elements in that list and one more condition is there interested user id should not be equal to user id so here interested user id uh, means any value like this so it should not be equal to user id uh, very clear because we are analyzing it for the user id so once again let's recall what we are trying to do here see we are passing a user so we got his id now for he, that user we got the interest list means that user is interested in which which field that list we got one by one we will take all the interest and we will get the list of users who are interested in that uh, that interest and we are counting it so when you will run it so you get output something like this very straightforward so you can see that so here see one uh, always counting starts with zero so here and uh, user id starting with one so here one means second user user id 2 so if i talk about user id 2 user id 1 and user id 2 both have two common interest user id 1 uh, sorry user id 2 because this is user id 2 okay user id 2 and user id 3 both have six common interest sorry user id 2 and user id 5 has four common interest so this is a very head forward observation uh, i uh, request you to uh, focus on this now let's jump into the next uh, uh, operation that is salaries and experience so now let's try to analyze salaries and experience so in the data you can see that we all already have salaries also so salaries we have and experience we have tenure so now we will be using this data okay salaries and experience let's see so there is a fact we have to prove it people with more experience tend to earn more so this is a fact let's prove it with our data set so first uh, definitely from the data frame we have to extract the salary and experience so the process is very uh, 
simple uh, we have salaries and tenures mk list so we are iterating every row of the data frame and from the row we are extracting the salary and tenure that experience and making a tuple so we have a list of tuple every tuple will be salary tenure salary tenure so let's run it so this we want very basic object so if the salary is this uh, 76,000 tenure is 7.2. If the salary is 91,000, the tenure is 19. Now uh, let's try to calculate average salary for each tenure. So, how we will calculate? Uh, so, the, definitely uh, we are starting with an empty uh, dictionary. So, it is a dictionary of containing key and value. Value will be a list. So salary by tenure, the name of the dictionary. So what we are doing, uh, we are iterating salaries and tenures, uh, this uh, list which we just created. So it is a tuple. So the first value is the salary, second value is the tenure. So salary and tenure will, will get for every tuple value. And what we are doing, uh, salary by tenure dictionary, here we are using tenure as the key. And uh, for, for the tenure as the key, we will have a list and we will append that list with the salary. So, for example, we have the tenure for the first data, the tenure is 7.2. So, for 7.2, we will be having a list. So, in that list, we will be storing 76,000. Similarly, 9.3 will be the key. It will be having a list. We will append 91,000 to it. So, we will do this for the entire data set. So in this way, uh, we got uh, this. Now what we are doing, uh, we are calculating the average salary by tenure. So how we are calculating the average salary by tenure, let's see that. So salary by tenure is a dictionary. So salary by tenure dot items. So see, this uh, I think you might be doing uh, this function items. So dictionary contains uh, items, key value pair. So this returns all the key value pairs. So tenure will be the key and salaries uh, will be the list for that key so this we got now what we are doing uh, since salary is the list we can sum it up we have already seen so uh, we are summing it up and we are dividing it up uh, with the length of the list because we are calculating the average salary so see we have a list containing many salaries so if you have to calculate the average salary you just uh, total sum up the salaries and divide it by the length of the list. So you get the average salary. So for every tenure, uh, this is the key uh, value is the average salary. We calculated the average salary. So this is average salary by tenure. So see, for the tenure 7.2, the average salary is this. For the tenure 9.3, average salary is this. For tenure 9.2, average salary is this. So this is it. So very clear. Now what we will do, we will bucket the tenure. So what is the uh, meaning of this bucket the tenure? Let's look into it. See, uh, so here we will be passing the tenure. So it's a normal function. So if the tenure is less than two, uh, we will return less than two. If the uh, if tenure is five, we will return between two and five. Now what we are doing, we are uh, uh, making a new dictionary that is salary by tenure bucket. So this is a dictionary. Now salaries and tenures, uh, this dictionary we already have. So then it is salaries and tenures is this. So salaries and tenure is the list of tuple. The so tuple is uh, salary and tenure. So what we are doing, uh, we are iterating the salary and tenure uh, that uh, list containing tuples. So uh, salary we got, tenure we got. Now tenure bucket function we are calling and we are passing the tenure so it will return uh, the corresponding string so that we are storing in the bucket and uh, salary by ten in the salary by uh, tenure bucket so, so this bucket will be the key so less than 2 will be the key between 2 and 5 will be the key and more than 5 and we will append this key with that salary so this salary okay so the so this salary will be appended in the list so see for every string value will be a key so corresponding to this key there will be an empty list so we will be appending that empty list with a salary so this is clear 
so this we do okay okay now what will happen now we have to calculate the average salary by bucket so uh, sim similarly we will do that as we have already done uh, so we will be using this dictionary dot items so every key value pair we will get so for every key value pair uh, we will be calculating its average and we are printing it so you can see that so for more than five means if the tenure is more than five the average salary is this if the tenure is between two and five the average salary is 61,000 and if the tenure is less than two the average salary is 48,000 so from this bucketing we, you can very easily prove that uh, salary is dependent on tenure I hope you got the point okay now let's uh, look into the last part of this uh, before winding it up so now let's look into topic of interest uh, so in this topic of interest what we will do see we have got lots of interest and uh, definitely people that data scientists are interested so if i talk about hadoop so many data scientists might might be interested in hadoop if i talk about hbase many data scientists might be interested in hbase so i have to calculate the number hadoop how many users are interested in hadoop how many users are interested in HBase? So, so I have to do the mapping of uh, interest and number of users interested in that topic of interest. So this we have to compute. So let's see how we will do that. So one simple way to find the more, most popular interest. So from that definitely we, will, we can very easily calculate the most popular interest. So how we will do that? Uh, let's see. Lower case each interest because see uh, uh, it's interest in the string so it can, it can be camel case also we have to lower case the uh, uh, interest split it into words because the interest is comma separated so we will split it into individual words and count the results so let's see how we can do that uh, so what we are doing for user comma interest in interest also so here this interest is a list of tuple so tuple is user id and his interest i hope uh, you are getting the point uh, let me show you so this is the interest so it is a list of tuple so user id interest user id interest so i am talking about this okay so what we will do, uh, we will uh, iterate that list one by one. So one by one you will get tuple as you can see that. Now uh, in the tuple we will get the user and we will get the interest. Now what we will do, pause. The interest we are uh, uh, splitting it and we are converting it in lower case. So first we are converting it in lower case because see that interest is a st string. So this interest will be a string. So we will first uh, lower case means convert all the characters into the lower case, and then we will split uh, this into individual words, or either to be more precise, rather than words. Let's convert it into comma. Yes, comma. We will split it into comma. Okay. So we will get. Uh, particular uh, one by one uh, interest we will get and we will count that word so see uh, counter you might already know so counter you might already know uh, it is uh, it will count uh, each occurrence of word so here word will be that interest so what it will do for for every interest it will count number of occurrences of that interest so see uh, once again uh, let's uh, look into it what we are doing we have a list of interest uh, so we have a list of tuples so every tuple is containing user id and interest one by one we are iterating that list we are fetching the tuple we got the user id we got the interest now we uh, use the lower case for that interest we split it in comma so we got individual interest and we counted it so in this way we can uh, calculate the total occurrence of the interest key hadoop how many times it occurred in the entire data set 
h base how many uh, times h base occurred in the entire data set so that we can calculate so that we calculated okay so that is words and count so it's a dictionary now in this uh, words and counts uh, dictionary uh, uh, there is a method called most common so most common returns uh, most common means the uh, uh, counter with more value i think uh, 10 10 values it returns 10 12 values it will return so that only we are printing so i hope uh, it is very clear to okay friends so we are done with the video number 1 for our new series that is data science from scratch so in this video uh, we saw introduction and also we did some hands on uh, project so we build a social network for data scientists uh, i hope you got a very in depth insight uh, of uh, data science and also uh, the project uh, i hope uh, you really enjoyed uh, coding it so thanks for watching uh, uh, definitely i will be coming up with uh, more videos in this series so please stay tuned and subscribe to my youtube channel helpful marwadi and uh, if you found this video useful please like it comment and share it in your circle